Hello everybody, I'm Dutch, and today I want to show you how a whoopee sling works um, and the constrictor splicing that goes on that. Um, first thing that's on a whoopee sling is there is a locked Bremel on the one end, which means there is a loop here that does not move. Um, we like to make ours about an inch and a half long, and then they have a nice eight and a half inch uh, bury in here. So it gives a nice clean look, um, and this is extremely strong. One of the reasons to splice versus um, using a knot is because a knot will degrade the rope up to 50%, and splicing generally um, retains 90% of the rope's strength. So you're paying a lot for a strong rope. There's no sense in making it weaker. So um, on a whoopee sling, you have a lock brum on one end, and then you have another loop that has a bead on it. And I'll show you what the bead is in a minute. But that loop is adjustable. So um, as I pinch here where the burry starts of this rope and pull the one that goes through, you'll see over here that that is... Uh, becoming smaller. If I want to make that bigger, I pinch here. Now, if I pinched over here, it would not work at all. I would not be able to pull that through. This would be getting tight on there. And, um, and as you'll see further down the road, that is really how the whoopee sling works, is that it's going to lock in place when you want it to, but yet it's going to be really easy to adjust. So the bead, the whole purpose for the bead, or um, sometimes we put a whoopee hook on there, is that um, if you were to bring this and make it too small, it prevents that from going into the bury. Do that again, you'll see that I can't pull that all the way in and um, that is the whole purpose of this. Sometimes these beads break, uh, but you could put anything on there. You could put a split ring on there. You could put a mitten hook. Um, you can even use a uh, use a wire tie and, and put it on there. We just want to have something on there to prevent um, this loop from disappearing down into the bury. So um, how the bury works is this is a hollow braid rope, and meaning there is no core inside of this rope like you would see um, uh, typical on, on a lot of those other type ropes, um, like 550 paracord would have that those white strands and then you have a sheath. Um, you can figure this as not having those white cords and only having the sheath. So um, you are able to just go and pull this through and pull it through here and it easily slides through there. But when you lay on the hammock or you put pressure on this loop and this loop, um, it winds up acting like a Chinese finger grip and it will not adjust. Um, we make this very long enough for a 764th. You want this to be 10 inches long um, so that it has enough of gripping power. I've done these down. I mean, when you get down to um, four inches, then um, you can start to see them slip but at 10 inches, um, I, I've, never, I've never seen them slip as long as everything is done right. To show that being done, I used two color ropes here. And so this, you can imagine that this yellow one is the returning rope. And um, you can easily pull this into here. So... Um, if I hold here, I can easily move it. If I hold here, I can easily move it. But yet, if I pull on the gray one and I pull on the yellow one, which would be the same circumstances when you hang the hammock, this acts like a Chinese finger grip. This locks up. Um, there's something called milking the bury. If you really want to be safe about it, you go and you do this, which makes everything really tight. But um, I find that you really don't have to do that on a whoopee sling and it locks in place. 
So that is how a whoopee sling works. Thank you, everybody.